Season's greetings, and for some of you, Happy New Year. Welcome back to CXC Tutor. This year, I just want to inform you that I plan on doing things a bit differently, in that I want to introduce some a series of full-on courses, the first one of which being pre-calculus, and this is our first video. In this video, I want to introduce you to the topic of functions and relations. What is a function? What is a relation? Hopefully by the end of this course, you should be able to define these two terms. I'm going to show you some examples and explain how function notation works. We're also going to define the terms domain and range, do some mapping diagrams, and talk about different types of relations, and also how to test for functions. What is a function? A function in a typical sense is just a machine with a specific rule that produces a single output. Here in my diagram I have an input, x, it goes through the machine, it is being operated on by this rule, f, and it produces my output, y equals fx. An example we're going to use is one with currency. So consider the following machine which is used to convert our local currency into US dollars. Five Barbadian dollars goes into the machine, it is converted, and you have an output of 2.5 US dollars. We know that the currency, the exchange rate is about half Barbadian dollars to US. So our, equ our equation is y is equal to 0.5x. Again, y is the output, 0.5 is our rule, and x is our input. On this slide now, we have a graph of the same equation we had on the previous slide that was in fact a linear function. And linear functions, like the name suggests, produce straight line graphs. We have our input x and our output y was equal to 2.5. We'll get more into graphs in another video. So function notation. Now instead of using the equation form y equals such and such, our function notation is as follows. We have f bracket x close bracket is equal to y. The f, this part here, is the name of the function. It's not always f. It could be z, it could be a. Whatever function, whatever the function is, you describe it with this letter here. Your input goes inside the brackets and your output is always produced on this side. So we have three examples of functions here. We have the first one being a regular function, fx is equal to x plus one. Let's say x was three, let's say our input was three. That would mean we have f of three is equal to three plus one, which is equal to four, okay? So your input goes here and corresponding chain is over here. 3 plus 1 is 4. The second function is actually a function meant to find the area of a circle. We know the area is a function of the radius and the equation, the function is as follows. Pi r squared. So whatever value you have for the radius, you input it into your function. Your rule is pi times r r value squared. So let's use our same 3. Let's say the radius of this circle is 3. We have a with a radius of 3 should give me a circle of pi 3 squared which is 9 pi. Okay? And a function doesn't have to have only one variable. You can have functions with more than one variable, such as this function of volume, volume of a cylinder, where it is both a function of height of the cylinder and its radius. I'm not going to give an example of this at this time, but I just wanted to show you you can have more than one input at the same time. What is a relation? The topic of functions is in fact a subtopic topic under a much broader subject in mathematics called relations. A relation is defined in its simplest form as a set of ordered pairs. 
What is an ordered pair? Well, let us use this function as an example. fx is equal to x squared plus 1. So, listing our inputs from 1 to 5, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And our corresponding outputs are 2, 5, 10, 17, and 26. Remember our rule here was fx is equal to x squared plus 1. So according to our rule, this first variable is assigned the output of 2. Likewise, we have 2 goes to 5, 3 goes to 10, 4 to 17, and 5 to 26. 1 squared plus 1 is 2, 2 squared plus 1 is 5, etc. You get the point. And what is produced from this, we call this a mapping diagram, is a series of ordered pairs. We have 1, 2, that is our first ordered pair, 2, 5, 3, 10, 4, 17, and 5, 26. Okay? The first element in these ordered pairs that will be this set here is in fact called the domain okay and the output the second set here on the right is called the range all right so the first element is the domain the second element is the range and we can use these ordered pairs to in fact plot graphs on a coordinate system Now a function is a special type of relation in which each element in the domain is paired using a rule with exactly one and only one element fx in the range. There are two types of relations that satisfy this criteria and they are called one-to-one -one and many-to-one relations. The, the one that is called one-to-many this is not considered a function, okay? So please make a note of this. One to many is not a function. Okay, let's give an example. Consider the relation f such that x maps onto 2x plus 5. If you notice, this is a different way of writing function notation. Given that the domain is 0, 1, 2, and 3, Find the corresponding range values and hence draw a mapping diagram to represent the relation. f of 0 is equal to, according to my rule, 2 times 0 plus 5, which is equal to 5. f of 1 is equal to 2 times 1 plus 5 equal to 7 and likewise you have f of 2 which is equal to 9 f of 3 which is equal to 11 okay so we have our inputs and we have our corresponding outputs so we can draw our mapping diagram Domain, 0, 1, 2, 3. Range, sorry. Alright, 
So our mapping diagram is as follows. You have direct connection between your domain and your range. Okay, so we call this a one-to-one -one mapping. As you can see, every element in the domain has a unique image in the range. Okay, there are no crossing. There are no um, there are no double images. You have only one unique image in your range. Pause here. Let you write down the formal definition. All right. However, not all functions follow this type of mapping. Most quadratic and trigonometric functions have what is known as many to one mapping. Okay? So, using this example of fx is equal to x squared, in this case, I'm specifying my domain. I'm saying my domain is between minus 2 and 2. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Now have a look at this mapping diagram. 2 minus 2 squared gives me 4. So, my arrow will go to 4. 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is still 1. And 2 squared is 4. So as you can see, I have multiple arrows going to the same image. For example, 1 has both minus 1 and 1 going to it, and 4 has also minus 2 and 2 going to it. It is still by definition a function because every value in this input has a its own unique output. However, you have more than one value going to the same output. And this is why we call this a many to one function. I'll pause here so you can write down the definition. All right, let us consider the inverse of the function we had before. Okay, so I'm going to swap the domain and range. Essentially, that's what inverse is at this point in time. I'm going to go more in depth on inverse later on, but for right now, we're, just, we're going to change the domain and the range. So the domain now will be 0, 1, 4. And my range is equal to minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. All right, my rule is the square root of x. When you have your square root a number, you have the possibility of generating two values, a positive and a negative. The square root of zero is zero. However, the square root of one could either be negative one or it can also be one. The square root of 4 can be 2 minus 2, or it can be 2. Okay, so this is a many to a one to many relation, and this is not a function. Simply because you cannot have more than one output, okay? The machine can only generate one output, but in this case, you're having two outputs for singular inputs. All right, we're soon wrapping up. How to test for our functions? Well, the simplest test for our function is something called the vertical line test. 
Whenever you have a graph of a relation, you can use this test to determine whether it is a function or not. The definition, given a curve drawn in the coordinate plane, this curve is a graph of a function if and only if no vertical line can be made to intersect the curve at more than one point. So, consider the following graphs and decide which, if any, are graphs of a function. Based on the definition, if we simply draw a vertical line straight down this relation, you can see where the line intersects. And for this first example, I'm intersecting my relation at multiple points. Therefore, this relation is not considered a function. Let us move on to B. If I draw a vertical line down this graph, you can see that my vertical line only intersects one point. Therefore, this graph passes the vertical line test and is a function. The last one is a bit tricky, but let's see. I draw my vertical line. As you can see, my vertical line is only touching the graph at one point as well. Therefore, this last relation is also a function. And this brings us to the end of our first class. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a comment and click the like button. Thank you for watching.